Hey, welcome to Guitar Knobs, the guitars, gear, noise, and nonsense podcast hosted today by these knobs. Tony Dudzik, Pick Guardian. Mike Trombley, Native Audio. No Jared Brandon. He's in the Dominican Republic taking in the sun and sand. And eating tomahawk yes, steaks. Yes, we miss Jared. Uh, hey, this is Todd Novak. Happy that you are along with our ride of the Guitar Knobs podcast. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We got a super fun show for you. And we're glad to have Mike back in the studio. He enjoyed, he, he, rem, he remembered how awesome it was to, to do this. Oh and man, so it was, was like, so I, much fun. I'll come, I'll come in again, guys. So Tony, yeah, what do a, we do on this podcast? We talk to builders of boutique things like mm-hmm. amps and guitars. That and is pedals. our speciality. That's our speciality. Yes. But we also talk to other people in the industry. Yes. Influencing uh, the, the influencers. Things. And well, no, that's a dirty word. Oh, we just, don't. Okay. Just active in the guitar community, contributing yeah. to the guitar community. Yeah. All and then, kinds of, and, and all then kinds sometimes of other people I'm that are that are involved on this uh, p- a podcast world. Yeah, the wonderful world of podcasts. Mm-hmm. All right, and other. I'm going to take the mic away from you. Hey, uh, who do we have on the line? Co Schneider. All right, Co Schneider from Flip and Flippers Fame podcast. Yes, and the One Day Guitar Show Fame. Yeah. Any other fames? Uh, not worth mentioning at the moment, probably. No, no. Okay, great. <laughs> Legitimately, we're going to have a really good time on the show, and we're going to talk about uh, the guitar community at large. I think that's something that we are at all. collectively... At all. Sorry. Um, collectively <laughs> involved in and contributing to, so this should be a lot of fun. First, announcements. Okay, I just wanted to share a quick email from one of our listeners, uh, John K. Fife, also a patron. Thank you, John, Thank you. for sending this in. And, and this is really, I, I would uh, actually really appreciate if anybody wants to, has any insight or suggestions for John. Once we get through this, uh, you'll know what I'm saying. Hey, Knobs, I just recently started listening to your podcasts and I'm working my way through the shows. I found them entertaining and inspirational and exactly what I needed to help motivate me to pursue my longtime dream of guitar building. That's pretty rad. That's cool. I, yeah, that's pretty I cool. Am, that is. You know, you read something like that and you're like, well, I, we contribute to that or yeah. at least to inspire. You add some fuel to it. That's, it, yeah, that's huge. Uh, he says, I've been a cabinet maker and furniture builder for 30 years in Pasadena, Texas. He says, I've been building guitars in my spare time for years, mostly for myself, but my wife of 27 years is running out of tolerance for, my, for more guitars to hang on a wall. <laughs> so... <laughs> He said, okay, and this is why I'm calling on the community. So here's my problem. I'm a terrible guitar player. (laughs) (laughs) Why aren't we all? Uh, Yeah. In fact, I tell people that I don't play because that's mostly true. I live completely outside the world of live music and have few relations with actual players or musicians. But I love guitars and love building them and would like to continue. As I stated earlier, your show has inspired me, but I don't know how to move forward with trying to sell my work. By the way, I just became a patron. Thank you, John. Awesome. Uh, nice. So, yeah, thank you. people. Okay, guys in the room and yeah. co. Mm-hmm. What do we? Whoa, 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 any words of advice for this chap? Reverb. Reverb. <laughs> oh, the echo. Right. There's an echo here. <laughs> That's actually a reverb, Tony. <laughs> yeah, reverb. <laughs> I mean, you guys are looking at no, me. No, honestly, so I, I think, I yeah, think that is the best avenue. Yeah. I mean, the, the in my experience, dealing with people on reverb, yeah. generally they're, they're more, more informed and more open to uh, right. you know, alter, uh, non-mainstream instruments. Right. Easy so. for you to say, Tony. So uh, <laughs> I would also suggest doing something and on Craigslist and not just posting like one guitar saying that's for sale, but maybe say, cause you're, you'll be local to the area and you could essentially just say, I'm a builder. I, I build custom guitars, include a few photos of what you build. If you would like me to build you a custom guitar or you want to see what I have, check me out. Uh, these are mm-hmm. for sale. People rally around local, right? And we we want to celebrate makers. So you, that there's two things right there. If reverb's great, but there's a really good chance that you the guitar might not ever see the light of day unless someone's looking for something very specific that yeah. you may have put in for keywords. Well, yeah. I mean, from yeah. the sounds of it, it sounds like he has a he has a lot of guitars to sell, right? He, so I think doing one, a store. Yeah. Well, I think even one of the 
you know, doing what you're saying, the whole Craigslist thing, I think if he's able to kind of post different uh, variations, like, you know, whether it's like a Strat, Les Paul kind of style. Or just a Les Paul. <laughs> or just a Les Paul. <laughs> but if, you know, if he can address different uh, different players' needs, mm-hmm. um, at least, you know, initially if he throws that out on Craigslist, I think, you know, he'll have a better chance of getting a bite versus just putting one style of guitar out. Absolutely. And yeah, there absolutely. are definitely people that will bite you on Craigslist. Yeah, and yeah. you know, there are people that don't, <laughs> like, you know, Todd was saying, they want to they, they want to address the local need or you or even they they want something out of the norm, like Tony was saying. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, so I think this would be... Totally I think the Craigslist thing would uh, definitely be something or, you know, reverb. Uh, Another thing, you know, to keep it local, if he's not afraid to put his person, you know, his personal life out there, Facebook marketplace. That's true. Oh yeah. He's a real guy. That is true. Yeah. Facebook marketplace is a little weird sometimes. uh, Very um, weird all the time. (laughs) (laughs) But but one of the things I do suggest for him to is start engaging in the uh, music community. You know, Absolutely. start start getting to know people, start getting to know, you know, who else is doing guitar? Start it on social. Yes. Just do it on social. Start doing yeah. it on the social, you know. Or go, go to some shows. Yep. Open some, mic nights. Oh, yeah. 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 That's not a bad idea. I mean, you could actually sort of try to get in with a, with a venue and, and, you know, say, hey, would you mind using my guitar in your back line or something like that? That would be you good. Know? Yeah. Uh, I think oh, one other way to engage is get your, see if there's some local shops that you can get your, you know, hang a guitar in and, and, you know, it's, it's a little tougher. It's not as broad as digital, but, um, it's a way, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or a local guitar show. Oh, here's, here's another great way to do this. And I'm We're going to lift this straight from honey tea. My good friend at Honey Tea. Document what you're doing. Document your build. If you take the time to to set up the steps and get a couple good shots and just walk someone through like, hey, this is what I'm doing with this new guitar I'm building. Literally walk them through an entire build of a guitar. People will want to see the next one, the next one. Well, what now what's he doing with the guitar? Yeah, that's true. And that also mm -hmm. helps to show your, you know, your technique and show your dedication to the craft, et cetera. So that's a really great uh, email there, John. So thank you for sending that in, buddy. Okay, we also have a four on the floor from Rick Langlu, one of our new patrons. And he says, Stone Deaf Effects, Fig Fum Fuzz. It's a, it's a fun one to say. The fuzz that does everything I need and the noise gate is a nice addition. Uh, Stone Deaf Effects makes some actually really awesome pedals. Um, I always kind of want yeah. to get my hands on that, the parametric EQ they had. Mm, I remember we were... Yeah, I almost pulled the trigger on it a couple times, but then didn't. It's, yeah. you know, would have, could have, should have. Got to pay the rent, baby. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, and then the 1981 Inventions DRV. Definitely my favorite take on the rat circuit so far. It doesn't quite sound like a rat, though it's even better. Hmm. Yeah. The Big one. Ear Pedals, who also makes a really fine uh, rat you know, yeah, the woodcutter, pedal, the woodcutter, oh, famed yes. woodcutter. Yes. Uh, he's pulling the, uh, the big ear pedals L, uh, yeah. which is uh, a nice lush reverb with a touch of modulation. It does a ton of different sounds for how simple it is. That's and yeah, and that is a righteously awesome company right there. Big ear Strymon mm. Deco. Great pedal. Oh, we tried that. Ooh, yeah. Man, that's a great pedal. It's so, it's, it's like the, it's probably the Strymon pedal that when you mention that everybody goes, Oh my gosh, that's a great pedal. But everybody just talks about like the timeline and the big stuff. So what's stuff. really quick, what's the big difference between that and say one of their other delays? Uh, it's the best phaser ever. Oh, is it the phaser? Well, it does nope. a lot of stuff. Is it really? That's the whole thing. It's, it's oh, like a time okay. box. I'm just approaching this cause I, I haven't got to play that yet. So it's outstanding. It's really? got a little bit of, it's got tape business with it, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like tape modulation, yes. a little bit of phasing. The flangey it's, sound, it's, right? Yeah, it's a little bit oh, of tape phasing. That's, yeah. okay. It, gotcha. I think it almost, it's, it's, it's kind of like uh, the vinyl yeah. kind of thing going on mm-hmm. a little bit yeah. too. So, 
Yeah. So he says, uh, Strymon, Deco, I use this one for a lot of different things. I think it's one of the most underrated Strymon pedals. Oh, we just said that. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> Copycat. Yeah, boy, I stole his thunder. Um, so, Rick, thank you so much for sending that in. And as I mentioned, we're going to be going through all of our patrons, uh, starting off with our patrons, going backwards and uh, getting uh, their four on the floors, including anybody that comes on new. So I think it's it's fun. Fun to, to hear what people's personal four on the floor is are. Um, I don't know if I can open up the floodgates <laughs> completely. I do to like everyone, that though, because I'm going to go home and look up that Strymon Deco. You need to get I, one, I, dude. I, you I, would yeah. love it. Yeah, I, uh, I think you would. Yeah. All righty. Uh, what do we do this week in Guitar Worlds, everybody? Let's hear from Co. We have. I'm going to go with Co first. I'm breaking the mold, baby. Mm. All right. Well, this week I got a pedal that's been on my like kind of wish list for years now um the dunlop tvp1 Ooh. Which, which is like the the crybaby wah type enclosure but it's like a maroon purple and it is a volume pedal but it can also be a tremolo pedal and you control the speed with the treadle um i've wanted one for years and i finally found one for well under 100 bucks come up wow. used so I snagged it. And if I don't like it, it's got a lot of flip room in it. So I'll be good to go. Nice. 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 Tony. Uh, let's see. Well, okay. Yeah. Just today, actually, I, uh, I got the neck for my, uh, Japanese tattoo telly body. Oh, so cool. It is. It's mm. a really cool. So my buddy, Chris put together this, uh, it's, uh, it's basically, it's cloth that he attaches to a pine body and then just coats, I don't know how many coats of, of clear on top of it. So it's, it's almost got a, I mean, the, the, the print itself is really cool. It's like, you know, all these Japanese tattoos uh, all the way across of the front and back of the body. And um, he just delivered the neck today. So I put it together. And the, uh, the one thing when we were talking about, you know, when John was talking about getting started in the in, in building guitars, there is that magic moment when you, you know, you've got the tuners on the nut cut and then you put the strings on. And when that, you know, the couple of hunks of wood actually become a guitar, when it all connects, when it all connects, yeah. it's, it's magical. And it may, you know, like this one, actually, surprisingly, this one, <laughs> I didn't have to do much setup work. I mean, it was pretty well ready to go, uh, which is unusual. Yeah. Uh, but you know, it's just you know, the, when you put it together and 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 it, the the pieces realize that they are a guitar, uh, it's magical. Yeah, we're well, gonna have to save the other magic one that you put together for next week. Yes, yeah. I will. Oh man, that's I will. So good, dude. All right. Well, that was a really weird sound coming out. Yeah, of what is that? I'm not sure. It's like a motorboat. Is that Tony? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Tony motorboat beans. over there. <laughs> yeah. Head beans. All right, Mike, hit me. Uh, this week, I I finally got to sit down and uh, play with the, my Marshall a DSL 20. Uh, it's it's an amp I got. Uh, I think last month. Last month I got it, and uh, I ended up doing a trade with the uh, owner over at uh in troy ohio over at trojan city music uh i ended up trained a couple of pedals for the amp and uh i finally got to sit down and play around with it and uh it's actually my first marshall ever i don't know if you guys can believe that but yeah um, Hard to believe. you know i'm typically a uh fender guy <laughs> i'm still in disbelief <laughs> i know and so, uh, didn't you just say you got a basement working recently yes yeah so that i got that basement that's actually now in my shop and i'm using that for all of my uh prototyping and uh my quality testing for all my pedals and stuff mm -hmm. But as cool as this Marshall is, this DSL 20, because uh, I got the head and then the um, kind of half stack looking thing, it's a uh, 212s. And as cool as that is, I just still love, there's something about a Fender, man. You know, it's, <laughs> you, this Marshall has all these knobs and it's like, uh, I, you know, I just turn my Fender on, adjust the treble, bass, volume, and I'm good. And, uh, but yeah, so... I'm going back to that basement. <laughs> now, let me ask you, yeah. I mean, the mids that a Marshall produces, is that, is, is that kind of throw you 
do you find did you find yourself like a, trying to adjust it to make it sound like a familiar sound yeah kind of it so the clean sound i kind of got set more towards the fendery kind of sound but it the thing is is I have the uh, gain for the clean channel like maxed out. So you kind of get like a little bit of a punch. It just sounds like you're, uh, you have like a preamp pedal going into like, say like a fender or something like that. So you got a little bit of dirt on the clean, but nothing that too noticeable. And as far as the amp goes itself, it has a uh, presence and a resonance. Uh, resonance. What's cool about the resonance is when you it- can add or drop bass out of the uh, signal. And then the presence, I have that all the way down just because uh, anytime you turn that up, it seems like it gets a little glassy. Oh, that's very, yeah, it's like like a a variable uh, bright switch. Yeah, yeah, and it's just like too glassy. So I keep that resonance, uh, keep the presence down, resonance up about 12 o'clock, and I get like a nice thick sound. But what I love about this Marshall, though, is um, the high gain channel. The the high gain channel just sounds uh, phenomenal. Mm. And... uh, in a perfect world, I'd probably I'd probably do my clean tone with the uh, Fender Bassman, and then just do a you switch can. over. Man, you can get the Governor, man. Oh yeah, I could do. Wouldn't that do it? The uh, old, the old Governor I haven't, pedal. I haven't been able to play the Governor like in person. The but Marshall Governor. Yeah, the Marshall Governor. It has uh, volume gain. What? You shaking your head? Just and tell a three me. band EQ. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm familiar with the pedal, but I don't know how that gets you clean sound. No, no, no. He, he, oh, yeah, oh, okay. Yeah. So, like, clean. I misunderstood. Yeah, I yeah saw, clean with the basement, but with the with the, with the, with the oh, Marshall okay. Drive. All yeah. right. Yeah. Sorry. I mean, there's a million. I, checked I mean, you out could for do the second. Plexi. <laughs> Tony's, Tony's still back at basement. <laughs> the womp, the yeah. womp, Wampler Plexi Drive would probably yeah. give you something like that. Yeah. I mean, there's a ton of... aren't. There's a ton of Marshall bo- Marshalls in a box, yeah, right? There is. Or you could have yeah. an A B switch. That is true. That's kind of what I was aiming for. <laughs> <laughs> but then again, you don't want to log around two amps. At least I don't. No. You know, so I don't know. But I do like this amp though. It's I wouldn't long. know about that. I usually have my, you know, roadies and techs take care of that <laughs> right. for me. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, as for me, I got to play around with a well, I, I got a touch of death by audio this week. And um, mm-hmm. yeah, Ooh. And so I was, I was playing around with uh, some fuzz war and a couple other things. And that was really fun, happy times. And by, by the time you hear this, you will have heard our episode about death by audio. Ooh. So, yes. ta-da. Wow. Yep. So we had him on the show and it was great. And we will, will have already known that because you're hearing this now. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, it was kind of fun because, you know, we, we prep and try to get familiar with it. And then, then when it's over, I'm like, I'm going to play some more. And then I know more about it. And I heard from the actual builder and, you know. Cool. Uh, it was great. So good times. Yes. Good times had by all. Ah, one, two, one, two, three, four on the floor. Go. Give us your four on the floor. <laughs> all right. So I'm going to start off. Well, okay. I had a hard time with this because I have different iterations of pedals. I like, and one of my favorite guitars that I play has my, one of my favorite pedal circuits in it, but I did this based on any guitar. I can pick up any guitar and this will work. So I'm going to start with the BC 549 from solid gold effects, Mm. single knob, little finger enclosure, dirty boost. It's dirty enough that I can use it as a drive pedal and I love it. It's my favorite. So is the, is the, is the one knob control the volume, the, the yep. DB on the boost? Yep. Okay, cool. Okay. So it's, it's the same hair all the way through or does it get hairier with the volume? Uh, it's pretty much the same hair all the way through, but you know, you crank the volume, you're going to push your amp yep. more. Yep. So mm-hmm. you're going to get more hair anyway. That's rad. Yeah, like I, I'm not very into things being clean and transparent. So when I read that it it's a dirty, nasty boost, mm-hmm. I had to buy one, and I <laughs> have never regretted it. What uh, amp are you running that into? Uh, for s- probably ten years now, I've been using a Fender Supersonic. Okay, mm. um, but I just got a Benson Vincent. Yes, a good one. You mentioned that at the show. Yeah, so I'm still running it into the Benson Vincent. Okay, so yeah. Awesome. That's cool. That's that's very cool. All right. Uh, new Num- number two, the Pelican Noiseworks Half Horse. 
uh, it's my favorite fuzz. I'm just going to say it. it's my favorite fuzz <laughs> of all time. Um, commit. I, I also, yeah, I'm going to commit. I, I did commit because it's actually in my guitar too. I have the half horse circuit on a slider switch in my guitar. Rad. So I can turn it on at any time. Um, and I put it when I have it on my board, I put it after the boost because I like pushing fuzz with boost and this fuzz, especially because he, he designed it to be very dynamic to where you can get Jack white or David Gilmore mm. out of it. Mm. Like that was, that was the aim. We, it's sputtery and gross and sounds broken on one end or on the other side, it sounds like you were just doing a nice clean solo where every note is perfect and purposeful. Nice. Yeah. And it's simple to operate too. <laughs> yeah. What, yeah, what kind of, simple. what kind of guitar do you have it in? Uh, an equits. Okay. There you yeah, go. My, yeah. It's the fuzz Rayburn. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. And is that a uh, germanium or silicone base? Hmm. Do you, do you I wish I could remember. I, I know it's not germanium. Okay. Um, I think it's like his spin on an op amp, but I'm. Oh, okay. I could be off on that. I know that it's it's based off of one of the sides of his Pelotar pedal. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. And that's the one with the. It's the glue bottle, right? Is that the glue bottle one? Yeah. 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 Yep. That's fun. Yeah. Um, we're hoping to have him on the show pretty soon too. That'd be so, awesome. Yeah. Looking forward. He's a great to that. dude. All right, number yeah. three. Number three is going to be the Wells from Like My Pedals. Uh, That's he, a new one. <laughs> yeah, so it's a it's a delay pedal. I'm not a big delay and reverb type of guy, but this one is a single box with tap tempo. It's a analog style, but it's not like a modulated delay. It kind of is in the vein of a um ad like an ibanez ad where it kind of mushes on okay. the repeats doesn't really like wobble it it's like squishes if what's, that makes sense what's the uh controls on that uh it has the time the mix and what's the other one i don't remember it's not in front of me yeah <laughs> i'm so i can grab it if you want me to oh uh, that's that's <laughs> the, fine we, we actually just have up it pulled up here the led light up I mean the 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 foot the the foot switch foot switch lights up yeah no no it's just oh it's, okay, it's a mix repeat and delay time it's red there it is ah, red okay. anodized it looks like then yeah I, uh, well part of his deal is that his enclosures are all custom for the most part so uh, he he builds them one at a time and you can order one of his stock graphics and colors or you can pick any color from his giant list and he'll put whatever graphic on it you want where is he located florida okay all right well but you can find him one. on facebook yeah yeah how much uh how much do those run i want to say the wells is like 120 to really to 140 right in that range if that's i remember not bad right. for a tap no man no, that's awesome. yeah and it's amazing delay so uh and i don't like delay that much <laughs> that's cool and, excellent yeah and I'm going to end my chain out the way I try to every chance I get with the Retro Mechanical Labs Clean Overdriver. Clean Overdriver. Uh, yeah, That's clean another over. new one. Dude, you gave me two new ones. Cool. I like this. Yeah. So the Clean Overdriver, there's three iterations out there. Uh, I have two of the iterations, and I prefer the, the first, which is uh, it's in a s single enclosure with a single stomp switch, two knobs. Um, so it's a boost circuit and a drive circuit with a toggle switch to choose which one you're using. Um, it has just, it kind of gets that mid top mid grind that you get from a, like a really big wattage amp. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of my favorite guitar players ha would play like basement 300s and stuff with guitar mm -hmm. and it just adds a certain sparkle to that top mid range. And I find that that pedal does that for me. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's fun having unique pedals too. I, know, I mean, like, let's be honest. Yeah, it's right? definitely uh, outside mm -hmm. the box a little bit, you know? Yeah, that is, that's, that's definitely outside it's the box. It's giving me more research material. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
the, so yeah, th- those oh, are man. my ones. Well, that's, excellent. That's a great selection. Uh, yeah, that's that's a fun one for sure. Um, all right, Co. We are going to get into talking about you right now. Uh, this is again Co. Schneider, who is uh, one half of the Flip and Flippers, and. Uh, I'm not sure how many people are involved in the One Day Guitar Show, but we're going to uh, get into that. Uh, Co, we hooked up with you at NAM, and we we had quite a few really great conversations, and I, I really appreciated the, mm-hmm. uh, uh, you know, I appreciated those because it's kind of hard to have those when you're there, to be honest. Yeah, and um, and sometimes it can also be a little weird in the in the podcast world. Uh, it's just we're busy doing our own things and listening to our own things over and over because we are, we're editing them. And so um, we don't have as much exposure to everybody else's uh, work often. So uh, it was really great to, to, you know, be able to get to know you a little bit. And so we definitely are happy that you're on the show. Me and, too. You know, and we're also missing your partner out in New York, uh, but um, we, we can take one call right now. So uh, that's why we're doing that. That's why he's not at it. It's not a, you know, selective choice. Like, no, <laughs> <laughs> we miss you, Paul. Yeah, yeah. Sorry about that, buddy. Um, so anyways, uh, the, before we get into the one day guitar show and mm-hmm. flipping flippers, uh, I just kind of want to understand, you know, how you personally got into guitar and, and what, was the catalyst that made you say, I need to get way more into my community. Okay. So I could take it all the way back to the first time I wanted to kind of do music. I saw like a behind the scenes documentary of a Garth Brooks tour. And he was explaining how he he would go out into the stadium before a show and pick a seat way in the back and brainstorm ideas on how to make that person in that seat feel special in the show. That's cool. And it it really inspired me to like, Whoa, these, these people are more than just on stage. They think about what they're doing and are trying to make it, uh, special for other people and like impact lives. And, uh, so that's kind of what got me started on the path. And I was lucky enough to have an uncle that was a drummer and he kind of took me along to show me how to play with other people. Eventually his guitar player broke his arm. So their, their bass player took over for the guitar player and they asked me, do you want to play bass? And I said, I don't know how. And they said, any monkey can play bass. Oh boy. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, uh, so I we might have Schneider's to remarks do not reflect <laughs> yes, the yeah. position of the guitar notes <laughs> yeah. podcast. We might have to throw a, uh, <laughs> warning in there. I, I still believe that. I mean, and I'm still a bass player. So, you know, that's, that's really my instrument is bass. I love guitar, but I play bass more. Yeah. So, uh, that's kind of where it started. I was in, couple different punk bands in high school and college. Um, I was in a pop country band for a while. I play for a bluegrass group. And uh, at some point, somebody turned me on to the 60 Cycle Hum Mm -hmm. podcast. It was was in their first 10 episodes or so. And uh, turned out I knew them because I'd played shows with them because they're local to me. Mm Mm-hmm. And just through them, I got in the, to experience uh, this big, wide culture of gear because uh, I was v- very much just stuck in what was in the musician's friend catalog yeah. and, <laughs> and that guitar center. Right. You know? So what year was this? Well, whenever they started, like 2014, I okay. think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, and that's one interesting thing about uh, at least Southern California is they're having grown up in Huntington Beach area. There's not, I mean, now they're making a little bit of a comeback, but you know, yeah. at the time that we're talking about right now and, and even before that, it's like they just flat out didn't exist anymore. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, you really only had a guitar center, at least in Southern California. I oh, mean, they, were, a, they really weren't, I mean, was, that was it. That was really it. Just wow. Guitar Center? Pretty much, yeah. Oh. Um, you know, there was a couple of rando guitar shops, but they were more music shops. They weren't mm. necessarily guitar yeah. shops. Yeah. So it's kind of tough. It can be. And uh, 
you know, luckily for the internet and the invention of the podcast, um, now I am in this world of boutique gear and spending a lot of money and building an extra building on my property to store stuff in. So, oh, amazing. <laughs> And where is that located? Yeah. <laughs> where can we find this gear? <laughs> what, what's the security code? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, that's cool. When you heard that and you, you, you got exposed to that, what was the, what was the next? Uh, so the next thing was they talked about, so this is a lot of podcast talk here. Uh, okay. They talked yeah. about a podcast called The Lutherist. Yes. Um, with Paul Roney. Mm-hmm. And so I started listening to that and it was very much about building like that was his main focus is like building up builders and telling his experiences and giving tips and tricks Mm -hmm. and that got me even more interested in this stuff because it it, i didn't know that there was like this builder culture going on Mm -hmm. uh, because i'm used to guitar center and i went to nam uh because i I had friends that worked at Taylor, so I would go from Na- to Nam from time to time, and I heard Paul was going to be there. So I went and introduced myself, and I played one of his guitars, and it changed my life. <laughs> like, as cheesy as that sounds, I played his Vireo that he called uh, Takeef. It was like a Keith Richards uh, Telecaster-inspired guitar. Mm-hmm. And it felt like it was part of me while I was playing it. Some of them just do that, man. Yeah. And I, at that point I was like, I got to get one of these guitars. I need him to build me a guitar. And so I eventually got on his order list and went through the process, got a guitar. When I went to pick up the guitar, it it was during cower fest at Doug Cower's shop. And I won a guitar and their raffle there as well and so i went home with Jeez. two wow. custom guitars what model did you win a titan Jeez, yeah nice and uh so i went home with this amazing guitar i custom ordered this guitar i won just in awe of the craftsmanship and how great these things were and their generosity to give me one at an open house and decided i need to figure out a way to give back to this community. Mm -hmm. And it so happened around that same time, because I was posting lots of pictures of my Roni, people started like messaging me and asking what the process was like of ordering a custom guitar. And that's kind of like what pushed the one day events into existence. Um, Because I figured, well, more people just need to experience this and find out it's not scary Mm -hmm. to order a custom guitar. Or or even what custom guitars are like, because most, the overwhelming majority of people, like you just mentioned, you go into a guitar center, there's what, you know, five five brands of guitars, maybe? Mm Mm-hmm. And that's it. And so uh, it, it is a tricky thing, because money's hard to come by, especially, yes. you know, mus- musicians notoriously <laughs> don't have money. Uh, <laughs> um, and so the idea of saying, hmm, I have, I have enough to buy myself a guitar. Do I go with something that I know at bare minimum, if I don't like it anymore, I can sell it and get some, get my money out of it? Or mm-hmm. am I even going to like it? Or even you know hey this this crosses your mind especially when you're younger is like i don't want it to be lame i don't i want people to know i've got a good guitar you know especially if you're just getting yeah. out playing that's a factor i mean it's almost the complete opposite now but um uh, you know those are things to consider especially when you're not as familiar so it's it's important to get out get to shows and stuff get the guitar shows local guitar shows and then obviously what you're doing so that's a great segue into telling us about the one day guitar show so the one good one day guitar show is like a pop-up boutique event um kind of like they have in the fashion and jewelry world show up in a city and set up a I, I, i do it like a demo room for a day Mm -hmm. And 
we didn't initially charge an entry fee, but we do now just to kind of relieve some of the costs on builders because I'm really trying to help them. Mm -hmm. um, and people can come in and they can play, you know, $3,600 guitars that they've only seen on Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, they can play with pedals in person rather than just hearing a demo on YouTube. And, you know, Instagram and YouTube and all that stuff is great. I even like Guitar Center. I still go there regularly, mm -hmm. but I'm trying to just bring a different it experience. Has, it has a need. It's got a place. Yeah. I, I'm just trying to bring something different to the table for people that are curious about it, but are scared. Right. Um, and I, I still believe that people will be sold on the experience of playing these instruments. Probably not as many people as I thought, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, people will still dig it. What were some of the uh, early hurdles that you had, or even that you still have? Money. Mm. <laughs> um, in all honesty, like the money aspect of it is the hardest thing. Um, there's insurance involved, travel costs. Um, Got to usually have to rent a space mm. when I go to a different town. Um, how big are yeah. these uh, spaces that you're renting? Like. Like how many builders and stuff can you fit in there? So I've done a few different sizes. I, in San Diego, I've rented a couple different practice spaces sometimes. Okay. Um, see, the biggest one I did was probably in Salt Lake City. We were actually in a retail store called Performance Audio. They kind of opened up their showroom to us to use however we wanted. Yeah. Um, I did an art gallery show type thing. It was like a it was an art gallery based on the art of building a guitar focused on Northern California builders. And, but it was a no touching exhibit. So one of the builders mm -hmm. uh, invited me to do the hands on exhibit as a one day. That's event. cool. So, yeah. Yeah. That's pretty good. But I've also been in a 10 by 10 practice studio in like podunk town. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> and that was tight. So it's varied a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. So our studio, basically. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, for real, it's not far off from that. Um, <laughs> so, and, and wh what are you? How are you going about the selection process for these? Are they are you, are they themed? Um, tell us a little bit about that. Uh, it started off with people that were friends, like that became friends through me being trying to be in the community, like Paul Roney, and through him. Doug Cower and uh, Kevin Equitz actually uh, ran into me at a local guitar show and said, Hey, you're co I want to do your show and let's do some other stuff. And so that's how it just kind of word of mouth, I guess uh, people reach out to me and I check out what they're doing. I usually try and make two or three phone calls with them. Mm -hmm. And just kind of get to know them and their process. And then they, I ask them to send me a guitar to check out in person. So a lot of these uh, people going to these shows and stuff, uh, are a lot of them your uh, podcast listeners? No, no. I started one day long before I was uh, doing a podcast. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm just trying to get a frame of reference time-wise for this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So the one day started in 2016. Okay. Is when I started working on it. Yeah. Nice. Uh, what are some things that you are looking to? So you, you're you're continuing to do this. How often are you doing it? Right now, I'm at twice a year. Uh, I had to dial it back because of money and family. Mm -hmm. I'm up to three kids now. Yeah. And uh, have a day job. So beautiful I, kids, by the way. Beautiful family. Thank, thank you, you for posting that out to the community. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's nice seeing who's out there, you know? Yeah. Yeah. We're all real people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, I had to dial it back. The first year I did nine. Um, <sighs> yeah. And so that was pretty intense. Had a new, you know, our youngest was born the month before my first one day event. Um, so I dialed it back. I did two last year i plan on trying to get two in this year i'm um, trying to partner with other guitar shows mm -hmm. or art exhibits to kind of like make get a bigger audience mm -hmm. and really get more exposure for builders gotcha are you doing that like uh like summer fall 
kind of term? Yeah, I'm looking at summer fall for this year. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Well, if you ever come to Ohio to do that, I actually have a perfect space. Yeah, your studio? Uh, no, where <laughs> my, my uh, <laughs> no. Yep, we got a table and everything. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> we'll just throw Tony in the corner right there. Uh, no, actually, but I, I do have a, a great space, but, you know, we'll, yeah. we'll, we can talk. But anyways. Um, I'm also interested in franchising it out. <laughs> interesting. So you know. That's, yeah, that, that, I think that that's a great idea. I mean, I, I don't think anybody in this room is not thinking about that right no, now that'd in be, some way. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be awesome. Uh, that's something. Yeah. I, we should talk about that afterwards. We won't bore the listeners with uh, that kind of business, but um, yeah, yeah, I think that'd be interesting. So, uh, okay. So you're, you're, you're doing that. You dial it back. I suspect, you know, your wife was probably happy about it, but not, mm -hmm. you know, insensitive to like, Hey, it's like it's like mine she gets what she gets how important this is to me in my life yeah uh and so she's very very accommodating although i know i i know my threshold of what i can do, <laughs> how much i can do and how much i can't you know <laughs> yeah uh, yes. i tend to push the threshold uh a lot yeah uh, I, my wife is very gracious. Yeah. So N Nam, Nam was my threshold. <laughs> uh, so. Yeah. I'm going to be doing Nam a bit different next year. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, cool. Well, so you know, you're, you're, has there any, has there been anything that's come out of that and not saying flip and flippers podcast, but has there anything been anything that's like evolved or come out of that as a result of, of your efforts there? Uh, like good things <laughs> or, <laughs> or bad, bad. Hopefully, or bad. Yeah. hopefully good things. Yeah. I mean, let's hear about the bad stuff. <laughs> no, I, actually it, a lot of good things have come out of it. Um, like to where I'm not super bummed that I had to dial back the actual shows because I, I've been able to build relationships with builders to the point where now, um, uh, they, they talk to me new i like i know about new models this is like one of those right. demo guy humble brag things like i know new new models before they come out or yeah. you know i get to help talk them through design things or they just want to know what i think of it if it looks ugly so <laughs> um, you know it, it's kind of it's very humbling that because i can't build a guitar right like i ha i'm skilled with my hands in, in my day job but it has nothing to do with building stuff uh -huh. so i'm always in awe that these guys that can build a guitar from scratch want to know my opinion about anything are you a taekwondo instructor or something or I, i'm an electrician <laughs> <laughs> i'm lethal with my hands no literally i can kill you if i do this wrong <laughs> leave me alone yeah <laughs> uh, uh, i think i got very lucky with my name being very unique and my close proximity to 60 cycle hum like in, in their early days they would just let me pop over and be on episodes whenever mm -hmm. i wanted to kind of so I, I just i got fortunate to where i'm out there <laughs> that's awesome nice. very cool so that takes you into to being out there in a different way, in a non-personal way, in a non-physical way via the mm -hmm. Flip and Flippers podcast. So tell us a little bit about how you got into that. So uh, Paul and I were in a lot of this. So now Paul Pennington, not mm -hmm. Paul Roney. We were in a lot of the same Facebook groups. And he, I think the first thing that happened, he, he adopted uh, some kids. And I think the first interaction we had was I reached out to him and just like told him how touching the story was because he's very open about uh, the whole process and just like encouragement. I was trying to encourage him like, you know, this is a really cool thing you're doing. I think you're doing a great thing in the world. And, uh, you know, that kind of started a conversation with us. To, and then it's like, well, we know each other about guitar stuff. So we started talking guitar, not just about family. And he was, he started a podcast with another guy and that guy had to stop being a part of it because of stuff in his life and family and just other needs that he needed to take care of. And Paul asked me, he said, Hey, you know, we talk on the phone almost once a week anyway. Why don't we just record it? 
and you can be the new host on the flip and flippers with me. And, awesome. I, and I said, okay. <laughs> Very cool. Now for those, uh, of our listeners who are not familiar with flip and flippers, could you tell us a little bit about what, what the show is based on? The flip and flippers is your coast to coast guitar podcast. Um, that's my little tagline. I say every episode <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so our thing is that we're dads and we like guitar stuff. We both have regular jobs. We also try and work in the guitar community and we just talk about things we like. Really. We're both very excitable. We like a lot of gear and we talk about it. We have a, few different bits that we do, you know, kind of like you guys, you have your segments and your regular things. We mm -hmm. have our regular things that we do. And, um, we talk about our family. We talk about our guitars. Mm, yeah. And we talk about work a little bit. We try not to talk about work too much, but yeah, that's cool. It's awesome. I will say one of the cool things about you guys' podcast is it seems like, uh, you and Paul have a, a pretty good dynamic to, uh, you know, together. Cause you know, sometimes, you. uh, you know, just having two people, you know, it's hard to fill that dead space between, you, mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, you know, but, uh, but it's nice to have two people that can really kind of, you know, a, you know, go back and forth with each other. So I really, really do dig the podcast. Thanks. Yeah. My usual default is to let Paul talk. <laughs> let Paul do his thing and then you chime yeah. in. <laughs> yeah. Be the exactly. color man. They always yeah. win. Right? Yep. I didn't take that road. <laughs> uh, I echo that. I think that one of the dip most difficult things to do is even, even when we're interviewing some people, it's, it is really tough when you're not interfacing with somebody right in front of you. Mm hmm it is difficult to understand like, okay, where did that last question go? Did you, did that touch on something that I can't see that you uh, maybe don't want to talk about? Did you get really excited when I brought that yeah, up? You can't like, see the other person's facial expression. Yeah, so you can't yeah. see where they're going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and so, you know, so that can kind of be a, you know, but if you find somebody that's, you know, you're able to, you know, uh, do this without being able to see that's <laughs> phenomenal. Right. Yeah. I mean, our friendship was based on phone calls and text messages right. to start yeah. with. And then the first time we actually met in person was at NAM last year. I found it difficult to talk to him looking at him. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, did you have to turn, <laughs> turn around? <laughs> well, I, just, I found, yeah, I found it easier to look at something else or sit next to him or. That would know, have been a really person. funny bit. They're like, Paul, I can't Actually. look at your face. Let me call you really yeah. quick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This by phone. You stand over there <laughs> behind that pillar and we'll just, oh. we'll just talk. I, that's really interesting, man. I got to say there are some, people that I've run into that I've had conversations I've had like ongoing, you, you kind of build relationships with them. Some of the people that, that you get to know in the community. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> sometimes it is strange and difficult because you're like, Oh, I don't, I don't know if we were okay doing this, but, <laughs> 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 but they, but here you are uh, yep. and I'll go now. Cause clearly you're uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I, I had an interaction like that at NAM uh, with somebody. I'm not. I won't get into it. But yeah. it was like I'm like, hey, you know, hey, nice to meet you. Blah 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 blah. Yeah. And then we're just both standing there looking at each other. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're talking on the podcast. Oh, <laughs> I've, I've had a few of those. I had a few yeah. of those. And the, I think the first real big one came when we did uh, the the Nashville NAM. Mm -hmm. And I was expect. I you know, you walk up and you're like. Hey, and they're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Leave me alone. I remember doing that actually. It's it hilarious. I did that to Brian Wampler. And yeah. <laughs> he, was, he was in line getting a sandwich or something. And and we had just, I mean, we'd interviewed him like maybe, I don't know, a couple weeks before that. It was pretty fresh still. And I had my shirt on and everything. And I came up to him and I like, I, I like kind of clapped him on the back. And I'm like, I'm like, hey, man, <laughs> buddy, friend. <laughs> and he just looked at me like, like I, he he just didn't know what to do. And I was like, I felt like uh, in Dumb and Dumber when when Jim Carrey comes out of the Seven yep. Eleven, he's like, hey, guys, 
Big gulps, huh? <laughs> well, see you later. Uh, <laughs> it was awkward. exactly like that. Oh, but I can't fault him. You know, he's uh, like, I, I wish somebody was there to film that. I, I would have been. I'm glad they awesome. were, to be honest, because it was. I felt <laughs> such a schmuck after. Oh my goodness! Oh uh, gosh! But uh, that's part yeah. of the fun, though. Yeah, he was a great guest, but. Um, I'm sorry for uh, scaring you, Brian Wampler. Anyways. <laughs> and your sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, so where, where, uh, where's that headed right now? Are you, are you comfortable with your format? Are you, what, any things new in the, in the future for you? Well, because we kind of do it for our, kind of for ourselves, like we just kind of have fun with it. We recently changed our format and we decided to do seasons. Like we, we kind of think it's silly to do seasons, so we decided to do it. <laughs> uh, so for Go for the grain. yeah, for one episode, uh, we had a guest host instead of me, and we we announced it as season three big changes, and so we had a new co-host. <laughs> and um, the next week, we did an announcement uh, where it was just a like a black screen and it. And Paul answers the phone like it rings and he answers like, hey, what's up? And he's like, dude, I had the craziest dream. You were dead. And then it just goes season four. (laughs) 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 That's fun. Yeah. So we're we're adding some new things to our what we're doing. The guy that was the co-host for our season three is going to be involved doing like field reporting stuff for us. Nice. Is that the guy and, with the uh, like kind of southern accent? Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. so I just finished. Is it a up, real southern accent or a fake? No, one? it's it, I don't it's know. It's a real southern accent. Yeah, it's yeah, it real. sounds pretty I kinda wish it was it fake sounds, much. I'm just saying. No, it sounds <laughs> I mean it's a thick southern accent. Uh yeah. I just finished up uh this is season four, episode two, I think that's what it was. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And uh he was doing a field reporting and started talking about the weather and stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, it was killing me. I was like, man, this guy has a thick accent. <laughs> yeah. So we're uh, we're gonna hone in his bit a little bit. Yeah. And um yeah, just have he's gonna be on maybe once or twice a month, I think is what we're working on. So that's awesome. Cool. That's great. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, dude, we're glad you're out there in the community and trying to make it better. And and not that you're like saying I'm trying to make it better, but that you're <laughs> you're in effect by just your passion for it are making it better. And um, I know that I'm you know every little thing that we're all doing is contributing to that. And I know you're contributing a lot of little things. So and the, some big yeah ones the too, whole so the rising tide uh, a metaphor right absolutely absolutely. <laughs> Uh, and it was a real treat. Um, we might have referenced this before, but it was, um, I think it was one of my highlights at NAM when I think almost all the podcasts, except for <laughs> the guitar nerds, uh, yeah. who I did see Jay skate by really quick and I, and I was like, Jay, and then he, like, he was gone. Um, <laughs> was uh, he getting a sandwich? <laughs> I, he, uh, <laughs> did you pat him on the back? <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we've actually met a couple, uh, you know, we, we, we met. So, um, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but it was just, it was cool, you know? And, and I was like, this is, we're doing something, uh, you know, that we're doing in the midst of all these other people who are doing their thing and they have their own group. We got our little, little you know, micro group in the middle. It was, it was, yeah. it was really fun. Anyhow, woo wee. Cue the Southern accent guy. All right. <laughs> Dougie Keen. Dougie Keen. Uh, we are going to get into a nice big slab of. You got to do Would You Rather. No, no. Would you rather. <laughs> oh, there you go. There you go. Oh, yeah. He's going to be really Cut that protective out. of that. <laughs> yes. I think we have to do something completely different. Like, would you, would you, would you rather? Oh, like a new would segment? You, would you, would you rather? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> I had your back, Tony. I had it. I liked it. Uh, would you rather? <laughs> would you rather? <laughs> oh, oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, oh. Uh, <laughs> I don't know where that came from. Shana Na takes over the pot. <laughs> I am into the gold glitter. I'm just saying. Uh, yeah. Okay, let's do this here, fellas. We've got a would you rather from. I'm going to pull this up here. My handy dandy puller upper thing. All right. Tony, not Tony. Mike, you're Mike. going to do this. 
Okay, so we have one from Oliver Gonzalez. And he's, he's he's one of our patrons. Yes. Okay. And, and so we also saw him at the uh, we did at the uh, the Nam show. Yeah, that was really fantastic because oh, awesome. he lives across the whole world. Yes, on an mm-hmm. island off the coast, a Spanish island off the coast of Africa. Okay. Yes. Wow. So we have our patron Oliver, and he says, "Would you rather?" <laughs> he actually spelled out. Uh, he said, "You're going to appear on a TV show, but your luggage got lost, and you have no guitar. The TV producers offer you a Gibson Les Paul guitar with two options as a strap. Option number one, a classic Fender strap, or option two, no strap but a stool." Mm. So the classic Fender strap is the brown and gold blocks. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, very familiar. Um, it, v- terrible vinyl on the inside. Oh yeah, really, sort of a garbage strap. But you know, hey, it's 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 a, it's also a bit of a famous strap. Or no strap and a stool. That is a great question. Thank you for that. Would you rather, Oliver? Uh, let's see. Spin the wheel of who's going first, Mike. Uh, I think I'd probably with the Les Paul. I honestly don't care. <laughs> I would just <laughs> roll the fender strap on. Um, because especially if I'm on a TV show, I don't, it, you're probably going to have that 5% of the population. That's going to be an actual guitarist and actually care what the band's playing. So, uh, I mean, I'd probably roll with the, uh, Fender strap or strap with the, uh, Gibson Les Paul. Yeah. Only because I'm not picky and, you know, I wear Nikes with a van shirt, <laughs> you know? All right. Yeah. Okay. All right. You are picky. Am you I know picky? you're picky. Am I picky? How am I yes, picky? You're picky. Why? Have you seen your pedals? Yeah, those are pedals, though. <laughs> yeah, I know, but uh, uh, your, your, your pickiness goes into that. You're picky. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, and you only play one kind of guitar. Yeah. See? All right. Tony. Yeah. Tony. I, I, first of all, I have little to no respect for stool sitters. Uh, <laughs> so that's right out of the thing. Uh-huh. And I also like the, the juxtaposition of the fender strap on a Gibson. So that's, that's the route I'm going with. All right. All right. Co. Uh, I am going to sit. Ah, on the stool. No respect. <laughs> but, but yes, only until the first chorus. And then I'm going to kick the stool out and I'm going to throw the guitar on the ground and play <laughs> with my feet or my face or my elbows or whatever, kick right. it around. I don't know. I do punk and noise rock these days. So, okay. It, yeah. I can, and I can respect that. All right. As little, long as you kick Jerry the stool. Lee Lewis action. I like <laughs> yeah. It. Okay. <laughs> Todd, I, I'm going to count on this being not one of the more expensive Fender Classic ones, but one of the cheaper Fender Classic ones, uh, like aforementioned with the vinyl on the inside. Mm-hmm. I, I can't play sitting down. I I play big, frenetically, like frenetically. I've got a very heavy right hand, <laughs> and uh, I'm going to turn it the guitar strap inside out. Oh, nobody uh, thought so about practical, uh, practical. So I'm going to have the nice soft inside cloth and the terrible vinyl on the outside and then nobody knows <laughs> wow todd's so smart. i'm not smart at the would you rather <laughs> wow he has done it yeah yes all hail <laughs> uh so let's see here tony baloney you got a list for us i do so at this point of the show, in the show, we like to thank some very special people, our executive producers. And I'm sure many of you out there are wondering, what? What's an executive producer? Well, here's how you do it. You mm-hmm. go to patreon.com yes. forward slash the guitar knobs. That's right. And you can find out how you too can become a Patreon. Yes. Our and, patron on and, Patreon. And a little update there. We have... Uh, what levels do we have, Todd? We've got $5, Five, $10, $10, and $20, and and whatever name else it. you can... You name it. Yes. $1,000. Beyond that, we're, we'll are we we'll work with you. Yeah. <laughs> Bill Gates, if you're out there, we'll take a yes. couple million. So uh, just a little bit of the change, the $1 tier. Um, we're obviously honoring those who have contributed $1, um, but yeah. we, we did away with that because honestly, it's like... it. 
it costs a lot to send this stuff and especially I mean, it just it just does and it's taking no excuses necessary no excuses Todd. thanks yeah. all right <laughs> so we've got a five dollar and a ten dollar five ten and up yep there we go done so uh one of the key things about be, being an executive producer you get your name read on the thing the thing, and that's thing. that's a trademark of yes. Brandon. So yes. many trademarks, it's a, man. It's a circle B. So at this point, <laughs> I'm just going to thank these executive producers, and I'm going to go. I, I sometimes I like to go from newest to oldest. I'm going to go from oldest to newest. All right. Ooh. So let's thank Tom our, Barazin, our very first one, our very first uh, Martin Cliff. David Wolfson, Matt Brammer, Carlos Mancha, Pete Marshall, Robin Smith, John Daly, Oliver Gonzalez, who just provided a wonderful Would You Rather. That's correct. Sean S. S. Chris Kearney, John Anglin, Robert Marfleet, Darren Gregory, Doug Christ, Michael Van Zant, Brad Partridge, Corey Nigro, Ken Sayers, Jonathan Jerusik, Brian Robison, Michael Senchuk. Michael McVeigh, Rick Lenglou, and our newest, Stefan Lam. Stefan Lam. Yes, sir. Thank you for signing up to help support our show. Ladies and gentlemen, this truly is something that helps keep the lights on. We are not just saying that. We have a studio that we have to pay for every month and all kinds of other things. And this truly helps us out. And we are so very grateful for your help. Co, where can people find you? The internet. Uh, at Co Schneider on Instagram, at One Day Guitar Show, at Flippin' Flippers. Uh, we also have the Facebook groups for all those things also. So Yeah. I feel your pain, I, man. That's a lot of <laughs> that's a lot of social to keep track of. <laughs> and there's a website. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so Excellent. C O E S C H dot com. All the things. All right. That's great. Mike Trombley. Head over to uh, nativeaudio.us and uh, sign up for that newsletter. Um, I got some new stuff coming out. And if you sign up for that, you'll uh, possibly get discounts or get pedals early. And uh, head over to Instagram at Native Audio. Um, there you'll see me just posting a whole bunch of random pedal stuff. And, uh, you know, shoot a message, you know, say hi. I had a couple other people from that listened to my episode that came out last week. And, uh, you know, they said they love the episode and stuff. And it's, just, you know, it's encouraging to uh, hear a lot of the support. So thank you guys for that. Tony. People can find me living in a van down by the river. Right. Uh, but no, go to uh, pickguardian.com. And uh, that's probably the best way to get a hold of me. But uh, you can also check out some projects I've been doing. Uh, I'm going to be posting some new photos of, uh, we talked earlier about the Japanese tattoo telly. So we're going to be popping some pictures up there it's right. at pick guardian and the number one awesome and if you are missing jared as much as we are right now you can get a hold of him at jared at brandon Wen wait jared's Twitter. jared's not here jared's not here the whole time what oh, you didn't know that mm. I, uh, jared at brandon wound pickups.com you can find him on Instagram as well, and he does a seriously really fine job. Totally, I, I I will I will testify. Yes, I got him in my guitars. Cause Cause he's got him in his. They're really good pickups. Uh, he does a, actually really good t tops. Yeah, paths. I like to call them paths because it his P nineties are out of control. That's for sure. Yeah. You can send me something directly on Instagram. Do a DM at our Instagram handle, Guitar Knobs. Also, shoot me an email, todd at theguitarnobs.com. We love to hear what you have to say. Share with us your would you rather. We will read them on the air. It'll be a great barrel of fun. So, Co Schneider, thank you so much for, for joining having us Thanks, on the Co. show. It was a lot of fun talking with you. I'm sure we'll talk with you in the future. Everybody, please go give the Flip and Flippers a listen and check out where you can get uh, in touch with the One Day Guitar Show coming up in the future. Mike, thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you for allowing me to uh, step in. It was, was great. great. We love having you here. I and, love being here. And uh, everybody, have a great guitar week. And before we do that... <laughs> Why don't you subscribe to our little show? 
Waka, 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 waka. Subscribe! Yeah. yeah! Tony, don't open your sack of really crap jokes either. Aww. All right, ready? Here I've we go. I've been saving them. Right, no <laughs> what if your mom swears like a sailor? If you hear me do this, okay. that's just a cue from my timeline um then you can wear the t-shirt that says i got the clap from the, the guitar <laughs> <laughs> I, got the I just made that up <laughs> that would be amazing oh i love it <laughs> you get your name right on the thing you get yeah. your name read on the patreon you get your name read on the podcast I got a monster tall boy right now. I literally just got back from getting an EKG too. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, get me off of this. Oh my gosh. What did I sign up for? These idiots. (laughs) Well, see you later. Well, that's it for these knobs. Please visit our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash the guitar knobs. Visit our website at the guitar knobs.com for all of our past episodes four on the floor blog, and other good stuff. You can connect with us on social too at our Facebook page and share your gear and stories on our Facebook group. Also, be sure to check out our Instagram at Guitar Knobs. Catch you next time.